Hey guys, I'm back with another video. This time it's a little special. This is an example of one of my typical monthly paint along tutorials. This one is a gouache tutorial going over clouds and mountains. Um, you can also use acrylic for this because the instruction sort of applies to both. As most of you guys know, I paint every single week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, live on my Twitch channel. Um, but I do these special paint alongs once a month as a thank you to my Patreons who have been supporting me for over two years and I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. So these paint along tutorials are available through my Patreon page. If you've missed any of the past ones that you want access to, you can head on, head on over there. Um, the link is below in my description. Um, otherwise, this is um, a freebie, I guess, and it's a little bit different because most of my paint along tutorials are watercolor. Um, but this one is gouache, uh, but it at least kind of shows you an example of how the paint alongs typically go. Um, and know it's kind of a long video, but I hope that you enjoy it and let me know if you learned something. So we're going to start off with our dark blue kind of fading down into a light blue at the horizon. And then I'm going to start as I get towards the horizon of the mountains, I kind of, I'm keeping in mind. The mountains, um, the peaks, the high peaks are on the left and the right side. There's not really a high peak in the middle. So I'm going to have this little like valley. And once I hit my horizon with the sky, I'm going to start um, painting in my mountains and then come to the foreground because I'm going to do the clouds last. Uh, so I'll start adding in my... Um, Me? Yeah. I'm going to go from blue in the background and get warmer and start adding in some oranges and pinks and in the shadows of the mountains we're going to do a little bit of some purple. Maybe a little blue too. Um, and then we'll add in our clouds which will be a mixture of blue and white mostly. So I'll kind of talk about each layer as we go but hopefully you guys will see how easy and fun it is. and. You don't have to paint the same exact design of my clouds. You can paint different style, uh, a different shape of a cloud if you want, but I kind of, I liked this, I, I like this shape kind of like coming up. It, it almost feels like it's like curling over the mountain and it feels really epic to me. So that's kind of why I decided to paint this today for the paint along because it's a really good example of when you're doing like fantasy style landscapes, especially, um, painting clouds and sky is fine and it might it's probably required a lot but also painting like the, the mountains is what gives it the scale so like painting the horizon line or painting the mountains or painting something in the foreground to get, make you like really see how huge those dramatic clouds are um, to me that's what makes it give, it gives it that like epic fantasy feel so uh, hopefully you guys find it useful to do something, to do this kind of painting. Uh, yeah, let's just get started. I'm going to use my medium sized brush. So as you can see, like compared to my, it's about the same size as my finger or so, because this canvas is not super big. It's, it's small enough. If I was using a bigger piece of paper or a bigger canvas, I would definitely break out my larger brush for the background, especially. Um, which we actually can use for the background on this one because there's just all, it's all blue. So there's no like fine, there's no fine detail in the background. <laughs> okay, so you guys ready? I hope whoever's painting along is ready and I haven't gone, I haven't, I'm not like rushing you to get ready. I feel like I've, if anything, I'm doing the opposite and I'm like delaying. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm like, ready, let's go. Just kidding. Ready, let's go. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, but really, let's go. <laughs> um, so when I use gouache, one thing I've noticed, and this is just from me, my, my, my own personal journey with gouache, um, I don't use it super, super, super thick. I tend to use it, if anything, slightly watered down because I'm used to using a watercolor and that's just like my background. So that's what I'm used to. I do try to use it very, very thickly, like with these clouds, this is pretty thick paint on there. Um, but I kind of like get frustrated when I don't have a little bit of water involved. Like it, it makes it 
I don't know, there's something about it for me that I'm not super in love with unless it's a little watered down. So uh, my strategy is um, I get my brush a little bit wet and it's like honestly hardly wet at all. Just enough to get it damp so I can actually like get some paint and have a nice flow rather than just only relying on like really, really thick paint. So I need my paint to flow smoothly. Um, this is a canvas board, so one thing you're going to notice when I start painting is, you'll see, you're going to see texture. Okay, so it's not going to be a solid, it's not going to be totally solid first the, for the first layer. Um, we'll come back in. The thing is, gouache dries as a matte surface, so once this dries, it gives my paint something to grab onto. So this is kind of a smooth canvas board makes it a little hard for the, the gouache to like hook itself in there <laughs> so I start off with a layer of thin gouache for my background and I could gesso it with with in like with a matte finish and that would be fine too but I just don't have gesso so I'm doing this um, and I'll just do this across the entire background If you have watercolor paper or um, something else, see, look, I have fingerprints on here, and so the gouache isn't even sticking to it. Isn't that crazy? Like, you can see it's wet. It's a little bit wet. But it won't even stick to it because there's, like, finger oil on there. But it doesn't matter because this is just my background, and it will stick to it once I go on to the second layer. So I'm just painting a quick thin layer of gouache, something for it to stick to. <laughs> Look how much I've touched it. This I feel like I'm a detective, like revealing fingerprints on a crime scene. <laughs> hey Stasis. <laughs> uh, but you don't have to worry about the background because I know Everything is going to be covered up in the end anyway. <laughs> and I'm not going to go all the way down. I'm just going to go down like kind of to the... A little bit past the lower third of my paper, my canvas board. Um, and it's already going to start drying. Like it dries really, really fast. My, my, this is just a thin layer. So Sarah already finished the clouds in the first layer. <laughs> Oh my god. It kind of does look like clothes. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, that was it, guys. Thanks for painting along. <laughs> oh my god. I trolled you. <laughs> Slave of hell. What are you doing? I thought you were out socializing. <laughs> See you next paint vlog. <laughs> Uh, all right, so yeah, now that this is starting to dry, I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna, what I really wanna do, and you can see in the reference photo above or in, in here even, um, if I, the darker my background, my, the, the, I want this to be really, really deep blue all along the top edge and kind of around the edges as well, fading into light blue at the horizon line. So that's what I'm keeping in mind as I do this and, See now that I now that I have that first layer down on the on the canvas, you can see how well it's sticking. So I can just come back in with really really thick. It's like pure pigment. It's going to stick way 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 easier. Um I will say that if you're trying to get a super super smooth um, a super smooth area of paint that doesn't have any variation in value. So like if you want solid blue, you're going to have to use thick paint. Um, you can, watering it down at all is going to give it way too much variation. So like sometimes when you see people using gouache with like characters or little mini paintings and they have like a background that's like all one color, very, very um, like a clean layer of color. That was just thick paint. 
And so when you're mixing those special colors, make sure you mix enough because if you have to like custom mix it and, and add it in later, it's going to be really, really tricky. Um, since it, it does dry matte, you can get a pretty, um, it's easy to see any kind of mistake. Hey, Guinevere. Um, and also I have to remember, I don't, you know, really have to fill in this whole area with blue because a lot of this is going to be covered in clouds anyway. I can kind of leave this uncovered um, and just focus on my, like, this area on the right is going to be mostly sky. So, um, but, you know, I just kind of wanted to have a consistent sky in the background without too many brush strokes visible. So I'm just kind of taking it across the whole thing. Um, and I'm going to start adding in my cerulean blue around this area. The closer I get to my horizon, it's going to go from like this dark blue to more of a cerulean down to adding in a little bit of white. Hey, Guinevere, I'm doing good. I'm doing a paint along today. So that's why I'm in kind of in like teacher mode and not so much chatty mode. <laughs> Does gouache dry quick like watercolor? Draw gouache dries very quick. Um, so you can see the areas that are wet but there's a lot of, most of it's dry already. There's only a few areas that are still wet. And I just did that layer, so you can see how fast that is. Um, I probably need more pigment because mine is running out. Listen, it's been a long day, okay? It's been a long day at the office. Um, all right, I don't really need to worry about this area because it's gonna be covered, so I'm just gonna kind of focus on the right side. Oh, and the other thing with gouache is if you put a layer down and you go back in with a wet brush or um, really try to like work in a next layer on top of that, you will probably notice that the layer underneath starts to come up. And that's because gouache doesn't technically ever cure. It stays workable. So I can go back in. I painted, I painted this painting like forever ago, months, 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 months. And I could go back in with water and totally fuck it up. So that's the other thing that you have to be careful of. Once you're done, please like store it somewhere safe or seal it in some way or just immediately frame it. Don't put it anywhere that could get, um, it could get water or something spilled on it or anything like that. So um, it's a cool feature for when you're actually painting, but it can also be really annoying <laughs> depending on what you're trying to do. Like skies, for instance, can sometimes be frustrating because you want to, you know, I'm, I'm taking my time and like adding lots of layers right now or adding lots of brush strokes and kind of working it. But if I do it too much, I could end up taking off a layer that I already did. Um, especially, I notice that especially happens when I use watercolor paper. So um, this canvas I haven't used too many times, so it's kind of interesting to see the differences. But all right, so I'm gonna do my cerulean, which is my lighter blue, and I'm gonna mix in. I'm gonna kind of show you. Uh, I'm gonna mix in some white, and I'm gonna start going down into my horizon and get a little bit lighter as I go every time. And I'm just like kind of keeping in mind, I want it to be a smooth transition. I don't want it to be streaky at all. So I'm kind of, I might have to mix in a little bit of dark blue here and there to make it smoother. Um, 
and as I go down to the horizon, again, I'm just adding a little bit more white each time I put it on the canvas. And if I go too much like that, you obviously can see, like that's a pretty, pretty intense line. So I can take my blue, my dark blue, and I can fade it like that. So it gets a little bit less obvious <laughs> that it's like a line. Okay, so there's like, it's like a back and forth kind of thing. Um, oh, yay, Yurachan! That's awesome! I hope you enjoy it. I really enjoyed that sample pack. And I'm not even done with it yet. I have a lot more to do. I have a lot more to try. Um, don't go too white with your sky. You don't want it to be like actually white in the sky. If anything, you want it to be a light blue, like a cloud, what do they call it? Um, sky blue, I think, is the term. Um, if you find that when you're doing the gouache or acrylic, actually, if you find it's just feeling really sticky, like you're painting it, but it's like not moving. <laughs> um, just get like a hint of water on your brush and let it loosen up a little bit. If you do too much water, you're going to dilute it too much and you'll definitely notice it'll start streaking. So it's like for, for, I, I just noticed over time, like a tiny, tiny hint of water will really help get rid of that sticky feeling. Um, as it dries, it's going to be sticky, um, especially acrylic. Gouache is drying, gouache dries really fast. So as you can see, the only, I mean, it's already dry from here to here. This is wet, a little bit wet. Um, so it's a constant, it's like you're babysitting it the whole time. All right. I think I got most of mine ready. I know the stream is showing it kind of darker, but we just want to go from like a dark, a really, really dark blue down to a lighter blue, sky blue towards the horizon. Um, it's gonna make, basically the darker your background of your sky is, the brighter, more dramatic your clouds are gonna be. Oh my God, what did you just do? <laughs> All right. Um, if I was doing acrylic paint right now on a big canvas and I was using my palette knife, I would not wait for anything to dry. I would just keep going, keep layering, because um, that's just the technique that I prefer. But with this, I definitely want to make sure my, my background layer is dry. Um, so it'll only be a minute or two. Um, it dries so fast and it's totally matte. When it's dry, it's completely matte. So you can see like all of this, this is not reflecting at all. It's totally matte. You know, I kind of like matte finishes. I always prefer matte finishes for photo for photos as well. So the fact that like, this is a finished painting, but it's totally matte. Um, I, I don't know, I really like that. So that's one really cool feature about gouache. Acrylic definitely stays a little bit shiny, um, but it's, it's its own unique medium. Basically plastic. It's kind of crazy to think about that. Also, hey Fiona. I am too bad for this. What do you mean, Nadaski? Okay, mine is getting closer and closer. Um, I could paint my second layer on this if I really wanted to, if I was feeling really impatient, uh, but if I did that, it would basically make smoother edges. And if I want to have like a dramatic mountain edge or something, it, I would have to use like really thick paint. Otherwise it'll just mix in with my background. Um, sorry, the question, is there a way to correct a white spot highlight you painted over on watercolor after drying or is it just one and done? Um, 
correct a white spot highlight you painted over. Oh, I see. So you were trying to preserve a highlight, but you painted over it. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> it usually, it's not possible to, to like take it off to, to, to get it back to being white unless you go back in and use gouache or acrylic on top of it. Um, so like if I do that, I just start over if I just redo it. Um, Unless, like I said, unless you have white gouache or something, you can add to it. Um, so, unfortunately, that's just one of the lessons learned. <laughs> All right, this is pretty much dry enough. I mean, there's a tiny bit of sheen over here, but it's gonna be fine. Um, I'm going to start adding in some mountains. Hello, Jin. Hey, hello, Kara. I'm sorry, Ember Chan, if that's not the answer <laughs> you wanted to hear, but it'll be fine. It's just a lesson learned, you know? Uh, yeah, I'm going to start adding in some um, my mountains, and I'm going to go from the furthest layer back to the foreground, and then we'll do the clouds. So with this particular painting, you could do the clouds once every few minutes my camera glitches. Oh, okay. I'll keep an eye on my camera. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes it, it gets weird. Um, you could either do your clouds first or your mountains first. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to do the mountains so I have an idea of like what scale I want my clouds to be. Uh, so my mountains are pretty much going to stay in this area, I feel, for the most part. Um, one thing that I've discovered is when doing landscapes, to give an idea of depth, um, you have that atmospheric perspective. So the further something away is on the horizon line, usually the the more cooler tones it is. So it's like blue-ish green sometimes, mostly blue. As it gets closer to you, you see more spectrums of light reflecting off of that thing, like for the mountains, for instance. So you're going to notice yellows and oranges and reds. And so um, it's kind of like a rule of thumb that I have that I usually start off my distant mountains, my horizon line, with more of a blue tone. And as I work towards me, I get warmer. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to take my um, my light blue and dark blue and kind of mix and get a slightly darker tone than what is right here on the horizon line. And I'm going to add in some like low peaks. There's going to be kind of a valley here. And then as I get closer, I'll add in some purples and oranges and yellows and, and go, as I go, I'll get a little warmer. Um, but once I do my clouds, that's gonna gonna kind of cover some of the distant mountains anyway, so I don't have to be too detailed there. Um, I mean, this painting overall isn't that detailed anyway, so. What about that white spot? What about white paint or marker over it? Oh, like what, like for um, Emberchan who asked how you, <laughs> how you fix if you paint over. Um, yeah, if you're doing watercolor and you accidentally paint over an area that you want to be white, you could totally go back in with gouache or acrylic or whatever. But, um, like, I know white, I've never used white watercolor successfully. For for me, white watercolor only exists to um, change another color. So, like, using it to paint as a kind of, like, changes the value of something or the tone of something. Um, but I would just probably start over if it were me and make sure I preserve that highlight from the beginning. Even though it's tricky, it, it definitely, you, you, you get like used to it the more and more you do it. So, so I'm kind of thinking like, that's like the, my valley is going to be right here. So I'm getting, it's just like a slightly darker shade than my sky. And I'm just kind of keeping the, I'm not doing like peaks right here. I'm doing like a low kind of valley thing. Here, it's a little tilted. There we go. Um, 
Oh, I'm gonna switch to my smaller brush too. My medium brush. just bring the blue down almost to the bottom just of that valley so that's kind of my valley and I'm gonna mix in a little purple as I get closer to my closer to me if I'm standing here but again we're back to the beginning again so this is all blank right now so that first layer of gouache is kind of just there to um, give me like a nice base coat it'll just be my background color kind of and it's gonna show in show through in a few spots but um, for the most part this area and this area and this area they're gonna it's gonna be a little bit warmer and I just want something for the paint to like grab onto right here so I'm kind of using some purple just like a really, really thin layer, pretty much. And I'm gonna let that totally dry so I can come back in with my next layer. A little more purple. You have color on your fingers. One thing I noticed in some of my gouaches, like the purple for instance, when I first opened it, the binder was like totally separated from the pigment and I had to mix it myself. So I took a really like skinny stick and I stuck it in there and I like mixed it around forever and it was a huge mess because it was like spilling out. Oh my god, it was awful. Um, so I noticed the other day, it kind of has been doing the same, it's been like separating itself again which is so annoying. Um, it's the only pigment that does it. It's this cobalt violet. I have no idea why. <laughs> it just has issues. So yeah, I'm gonna let this dry for a second so I can have a layer of paint for just to grab onto for the second layer. Putting a purple undertone under the mountain, wouldn't have thought. Yeah, Emmerchen, um, two reasons. <laughs> uh, I wanted to have like this particular piece of canvas board is really hard to paint on with gouache. It's not it's pre-primed but it's still a little bit slippery for the gouache to like attach to so the first layer I did especially in the sky um, I had to put just like one thin layer down and that gave my gouache something to grab onto so um, I went back in with a second layer and was able to get that really really deep pigment blue so the first layer was a hot mess it was just it looked like this it was just like nasty <laughs> um so i did the same thing for the mountains and some of it might show through but for the most part we're gonna cover it up um but it is kind of cool to have like a nice even undertone or a nice cohesive undertone to a painting like i know that's a pretty popular strategy for oil and i've also even seen people do it with acrylic so um but for me it was more of like a logistical choice <laughs> And I wouldn't, I didn't need to do that when I did my um, watercolor, when I did it on watercolor paper, I did not have to do that first. I just could paint straight up on all one layer. Um, same thing for this, which is like a canvas paper, but it's still more like watercolor paper.
You had to mix for a while to get it to work properly. Yeah, I don't know. Something about that one color <laughs> just isn't happy. So, all right. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna do the second layer of the mountains now. Um, that's pretty much dry. It's a super thin layer, so it just, it dried really fast. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna work some of that blue. And again, this is where it can get a little tricky because I already have one layer of gouache down. If I use water at all or really like work my brush into it, I could end up picking up the layer underneath it. So if you're running into that, um, it's just how gouache is. <laughs> and you kind of have to figure out ways to work around that either by don't not using water so much or using very, very thick layers of paint instead of thin layers. So I'm gonna do blue, some darker blue and purple in my shad the shadows of my mountains. So on the right side, as they kind of like fall down, I just needed to see. and I'm just kind of designing it as I go. I don't know, I have, just like in the reference photo above me, I kind of just sort of winging it, seeing what kind of composition looks good as I begin to throw in the shadows. Uh, I kind of feel like the mountains are like wrapping around towards me. But as I get closer, I'm adding more purple and I'm gonna start adding pink and orange as well to warm it up a little bit. but still keeping it cooler tones in the shadows. Hey, Steve. Oh my goodness. Thank you for the raid and the host. Steve, guess what? I'm doing a paint along tutorial. Otherwise I would totally sing something for you. So we have to do it next time, I think. <laughs> I know you're gonna kill me. He's like, what you said. But I'm in like teacher mode right now, so. Um, on the left side of my mountains, I'm gonna start adding some um, oranges. And I'm gonna start like filling in the valley a little bit with oranges and pinks. But Steve, seriously, I really appreciate that. Thank you, welcome everybody. Paint along streams are a little bit different, and they are they um, they require a different type of attention. <laughs> so, welcome everybody. You guys, please make sure you're following Steve. He's an amazing, amazing musician. So inspiring has such a beautiful voice. Um, okay, so don't wanna get too distracted. All right. And I'm gonna take my orange and I'm gonna add in a little bit of white to my orange so I get like a bright white, uh, a bright orange tone. And some kind of fit that into some of the textures of the valley to make it look like the light is hitting it. I'm like trying to hold my thing up a little bit so you can, it doesn't get too shiny but I probably don't need to quite as much. Hey, Loco. Um, we're here on the left side. I 
Um, thinking about my mountain peak on the left, my left side mountain is like a lot brighter and bigger than the right side. So the peak side, the peak um, on the right side of the peak is going to be a little bit brighter and more highlighted than the left side. So I'm keeping those warm colors on the right side. And as I do the shadows, we'll get into those purples, purple tones again. I'm even, even adding in a little bit of blue into the left side shadows so it doesn't stay too bright. Um, but this painting is not about mountains, so I'm only doing these like very loosely, very gestural, nothing crazy. Um, and then we're gonna um, start the clouds in a second, so don't worry too much about your mountains. Mark, thank you for the follow. It's obviously this is a pretty stylized color palette as well, so you know you can use any colors you want. You don't have to do the same as me, but um, I just wanted to like keep it a little bit similar to the reference photo for you guys. Mine is so bad. Nadaski! <laughs> oh, I think you're being too hard on yourself and you should give it a little more time. Give yourself some credit. Give yourself some patience. It's everything you're doing right now, you're probably learning a ton. You're, even if it's like, oh, I shouldn't do that again or I shouldn't try that again. Like, even that is a learning experience. <laughs> and I do that every time I paint something. So. Um, all right, I'm going to jump into my clouds. You guys ready? This is the easy, fun part. <laughs> I think this is the harder part. Setting your whole painting up seems harder to me than doing the actual cloud. But like I said, I really enjoy having some kind of context in the painting to show how, show the scale of the cloud itself. My orange turned green. Okay. So orange turning green probably means it's mixing with the blue or the blue is showing through too much. So in order to avoid that, you can like if if you aren't working very, very thickly or um, opaquely, you can put white down anywhere that you want to put your orange first. You could put white down and re then you're going to separate it from that blue background. So it, mine did get a little bit muddy in these shadowy areas, but um, I can always come back in and like lighten it up later. I just wanted to put something down for now and then we can come back to it. Wait a second for the cloud. Okay, we can wait a second. <laughs> like I can come back in and add a little bit of warmth and brightness to my, um, my cloud, my mountains. You love those bright, mighty clouds? Yeah. That's why I thought this would be a fun one to do for paint along because it's pretty dramatic and, um, but yeah, like I said, if, by the end of the painting, paint along today, if you guys want to, if we have time and if anybody is up for it, we could go over how to do backlit clouds as well really quickly. I could do it on like a little postcard size piece. It's a different slightly different strategy, different way of looking at it, but same 
idea kind of applies. Like you want to start, get down your gradient and your, get down your background first, whatever color your sky is going to be, and then go into the clouds. Um, so before I start the clouds, I just want to quickly point out, uh, since they are obviously lit from the side, um, so the sun is like pointing, the sun rays are coming from the side or maybe even like from behind me. Uh, and that's where you get those bright highlights. Like this one shows it especially. Um, the brightest parts of the clouds are where the sun is reflecting off of it. Okay. So you have to kind of see your clouds as 3d objects, not just 2d cloud painting. I always, when I'm, when I'm actually painting clouds, I'm thinking about the actual form of it. So I think like I could reach in and like grab that cloud. Well, obviously you can't grab a cloud, but, um, you know, you can feel that volume. So, um, building up the layers is pretty important. We're going to focus on starting off with the shadows of the clouds and then adding the highlights on top of that. Slave of Hell knows he will be murdered 17 different ways within a second of any spoilers. <laughs> so yeah, seriously though, anybody who does a spoiler in my chat just gets instant banned. I don't even care if that's mean because don't fuck it up for everyone, okay? I'll kill you. All right, so for the clouds, we're gonna start off by painting the shadows of the clouds, which you can kind of see on the left side or the upper side of the cloud um, is a little bit darker. So to do that, I used my titanium white and I mixed in some of the background blue. So yeah. I use like cerulean or the ultramarine uh, light. Also, doodling, thank you for the host. Um, so on my palette, I have like hot mess of blue. <laughs> I kind of just make, um, I take my dark blue and my white and I kind of mix back and forth until I get a light enough shade that I find pleasing. And if you want your clouds to be really stormy, you can leave in some of that darker blue or even add in some gray, but I'm going to keep it pretty light. So, um, mostly sticking with the blue and the white. So I'm taking my cerulean, which is my lighter blue color that's in the lower part of the sky. So I'm not using the ultramarine blue. This is the ultramarine blue, the really, really dark blue. I'm using the lighter blue uh, and mixing in the white. So again, taking that cerulean, mixing it with some white and here goes. Just put a stroke down. Don't freak out about it. Just do it. Just get something on the paper, <laughs> on the canvas. Um, and I'm kind of using circular motions for this. I actually have ruined a lot of brushes doing this, like with my acrylic brush, with my, when I paint on canvas, um, I have like ground my brushes into little stubs, but for me, it's my favorite way of doing clouds or fluffy textures. Um, and so I kind of do circular motion. Which is also why I like the angled brushes because it gives me like, they are way more sturdy and I can like really grind and like mix my paint on the canvas. So I'm thinking about, I'm only painting the shadows of my clouds right now. I'm, I'm not adding any pure titanium white until later. So um, thinking about where the edge of my cloud is gonna be and grinding it in there. <laughs> you can use just like big brush strokes if you want. You don't have to really like grind it. But if you do, you have to use thicker paint, um, more like um, full brush stroke. Uh, sorry, get more paint on your brush. 
Um, so I'm bringing it all the way down to basically my horizon line. My clouds are actually going to slightly touch the tip of my mountain. So um, if you want your mountain peak to be like a solid mountain peak in front of your mountains, that's totally cool, but you'll have to come back in and touch it up or do another peak on top of your clouds. But for me, I want my the peaks of my clouds to be like slightly hidden within the within the clouds. Wait, did I just I want my mountain peaks to be slightly hidden within my clouds. <laughs> like the clouds are just curling up over that mountain range and like engulfing this whole valley. So to, for me, I don't care if my mountain peaks kind of disappear a little bit. It's actually a good thing. So continue that. And keeping like very loose brush strokes. Um, it's not super solid. Continuing to use that cerulean blue. Actually need more cerulean. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to I, I have a feeling everyone in chat is in trouble right now. I don't know what's going on, but when I look up excuse me, it looks suspicious. When I when I go back and read chat, am I gonna be busting skulls? Um, you can see like some of the edges of my clouds are kind of wispy. If you like that wispiness or if you'd prefer to have more of like a heavy edge of your cloud, just be careful about the how fast you're going <laughs> and how much paint is on your brush. So I kind of like let my paint um, as I'm going, I'm like, okay, there's not much paint left on my brush. I'll just do like a quick brush stroke over here and it like leaves that wispy trail. But if you want really, really thick, solid edges of your clouds, you just need to use thicker paint. Don't read chat, just don't. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, as I get closer to my my mountains, I'm going to get a little bit lighter, just a tiny bit lighter, and I'm going to let it kind of like fade. I'm going to let the paint kind of like wear itself out <laughs> and like just fade off of my brush. So you can still see a little bit of the mountains coming through, but not much. Like these background mountains. Um, I might, I might leave like a little bit, a little window right here or, you know, leave a window here or there to have some peeking through, but I want my mountains to just kind of look like they're just like folding into that valley. All right. So we have our shadows of our clouds pretty much ready. And if you, like I said, if you wanted to have your clouds be like really stormy, um, you would want to use deeper tones, deeper shadow tones, and you can even add in some gray um, or purple or any kind of color, really. Um, you can have fun. You can have a lot of fun with colors in clouds. Uh, but probably make this a little bit higher up here. But I wanted mine to be pretty light, so. Now I'm going to start adding in my highlights. So it's going to totally change the, <laughs> the appearance. It's going to be pretty dramatic because of how dark my sky is. Um, it's going to be really dramatic. So I'm using almost pure white because I'm using gouache. Also, if you're using acrylic and your paint is still, if this is still wet, you're going to notice as you put in your highlights, it's going to start mixing in and it's going to be not quite as bright as you thought it was. So you might have to wait for it to completely dry before you do the final highlights on your clouds. But for now, I don't care. I'm doing, 
I'm going to add the highlights in and it's definitely going to start mixing with the color I already put down, but that's okay because it'll give me like kind of a nice gradient on some of the edges. So you can see it's already not just like pure white. It's already mixing in with that blue, which is fine. So I'll just keep grabbing some white and um, building up my highlights slowly, very slowly. Um, I'm thinking about the light hitting it from the right side, so I'm keeping the right side a little brighter and letting the left side kind of mix in with the shadows. I'm doing bigger brush strokes now, not so much little bit, little tiny circles. I'm doing like longer strokes of color. Uh, sorry, longer brush strokes. Need more white. You haven't used acrylic for ages. Are you having fun? Sometimes the angle of your brush really makes a difference. So if your paint is sitting on one particular part of your brush and you want your this edge to be highlighted, if I if my paint is sitting this way along my brush, but I do this, it's gonna leave a streak going that way. If I if I want this edge of my highlight if I want this edge of my cloud to be highlighted, I wanna deposit that paint first. So I instead of painting it like this, I'll tilt it so like all of that white paint comes off in one brush stroke. Why did I think I could do this in watercolor? You can do it! <laughs> well, again, if you we're doing it in watercolor. As you know, I'm gonna be doing the watercolor cloud tutorial next Saturday, so I hope you'll consider joining in then too. I'm sure it's prettier than you're giving yourself credit for. Um, rather than having um, one, so this is like kind of the cloud is like billowing up. I'm not just having one like solid line of white around the edge of my cloud. I'm kind of giving it little, um, each, there's like little steps of whiteness happening. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm giving it multiple clouds. Up. <laughs> oh my God, please. English work. I'm giving the edges of the clouds. Um, nope, nope, nope. I just can't. I can't English. <laughs> Rip. End of paint along. <laughs> um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> I'm not just like lining the entire edge with white, okay? I'm adding little chunks of white here and there and giving, making, making it into many sections. So uh, it gives, you know how clouds have like those, that pillowy effect where there's like little bunches of cloud like building up and they all make one big cloud, um, like little pockets of light here and there. So I'm thinking about that as I do this and I'm not, I'm kind of being spontaneous when I place, when I place it, but overall I just want to make sure there's tons of variation because if you just do a solid line, it's not going to look very realistic. Clouds are very organic in there. It's just like, they have so much shadow and highlight in like one little tiny area. It changes dramatically. So it's really, really helpful to have lots and lots of variation. Um, I blame Slave of Hell because he's teaching me to speak German. Or he's supposed to be. Good thing English is not your native language. <laughs> Get back here. I kind of created like more of a nighttime scene, I feel like. <laughs> which is fun. I made my sky really, really dark. I 
And as my paint starts to dry, I'm gonna slowly add in more um, white so that the edge, the furthest edge on the right side is the one that's like highlighted the brightest in all of these little sections. So the more little pockets of shadow and pockets of light that highlight that I have, the more realistic it appears because it's all that variation. It, it kind of tricks your eye into seeing the cloud. Whereas if I had just solid color and then a highlight, like one line of white, it would, I mean, it, you would see it as a cloud, but it would be much, um, much less realistic. So. Um, just try it out. Try out a few different... Um, obviously, because this is opaque, you don't have to just leave it as it is if it's not looking good. You can come back in with your light blue and totally repaint this with light blue and then try your highlights again. So um, if you're struggling with that and you're like, oh, it doesn't look like I wanted to, um, just try it again. It's your painting to do with as you please. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit some clouds over here on the right side too, like just kind of like behind the mountain. To give it more um, depth back there. And if you want your clouds to be more shadowy, just add in some of that darker blue again and See, now it's just like blending in with my background mountains. I mean, you do have, unlike watercolor, you have like a little bit more leeway with your <laughs> layering. You can, I mean, you have a lot more. You can keep layering and layering and layering. So how, I wonder, how are you guys feeling? Those of you who have done, have painted along with me today. I hope you're feeling decent about it. And if you are painting along, but you feel like you're struggling, please tell me and, and like ask me any question that could help. Like if you're running into problems doing one specific thing. What is it? I can try to help you. I could try to talk you through it. Sometimes it is just a matter of practice, but maybe there's something I can do to explain it in a different way or... Um, we can also talk about doing um, backlit clouds because obviously these clouds are more like side lit or front lit. Sometimes not being content with what I paint. Yeah. Feel good about it. Good. Oh, thank you so much, Beardy and Kira and Slave of Hell for helping me. <laughs> you guys are being such awesome mods. Troop. I know you are a slave of hell.
after stream today, I'm gonna go decorate my tree. I'm so excited. And I'm gonna drink the last of the mead. Yes, Kira, the mead is gone. <laughs> Why is the mead gone? <laughs> Rip mead. And I'm gonna play Assassin's Creed all night. And then tomorrow, I'm so excited, we're gonna go for a drive down to, actually I'm not exactly sure where we're going yet, but we're gonna go for like, we're just gonna drive an hour and a half into the wilderness and have a mini frozen picnic and I'm gonna paint and hopefully take photos. I'm slightly worried that it's gonna snow and be rainy, but we'll see. I don't care. I don't care. We just I just want to like go out and be out in the wilderness. Today was the first day I left my house since last Sunday. <laughs> so, yeah. I just got to get out. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna just tighten up the colors down here a tiny bit. Okay, now's your chance. Anybody who is here to learn about clouds or, yeah, clouds, because we're doing clouds today, um, please tell me right now in chat, do you have any questions? Can I help you? Can I help, ex can I explain anything a different way? This is pretty much the opposite of what I normally paint. The struggle is real. Saijo, I'm so excited that you're doing it though. I am sure your brain is just like, going crazy. It's like learning so much right now. And it might translate to being frustrated. I hope you just keep up with it and know that the more you do it, the more you practice, the better it'll get. So um, yeah, so now's your chance. Tell me if you have any more questions. Tell me if you are dying to see backlit clouds. I can do a quick example on like watercolor postcard style. Um, but yeah, I usually try to allot two hours just in case. So we have a little time left if you guys have any more questions. There's so much you can do with clouds. I at least wanted to give you guys like a, um, crash course <laughs> in in this type of cloud because I think it's a pretty common a common style and if you know how to do this type of cloud you can do most types of clouds and you can also add you can change the color and you can change the background imagine if you did this style of cloud with the background was like a pink and purple sky and the cloud itself was like an orange and red and purple and blue cloud you know like just changing the colors doing this exact technique but changing the colors can give you like a whole nother feeling um it's so much fun <laughs> deepening the depth <laughs> that, that sentence deepened the depth of my despair <laughs> Is it okay if mine looks completely different? Absolutely, Nadaski. I love, I love seeing everybody's own style. Hey, KG Moonpie. Good evening or good morning. <laughs> I, I love when everybody sends me their thing and it's like people use different colors, different styles, different, um, even different shapes of things. Like it's fascinating to me. And it's funny how often people are like, oh, mine is garbage. And then they send it to me and I'm like in love with it. <laughs> so, yeah, 
I'm gonna leave mine there. So thank you for joining me. I hope you guys had fun. And whoever joined in with the painting, I hope you I hope you learned something. Um, next weekend will be watercolor. So we'll do watercolor clouds. And this is the idea that I have. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so we have we have all sorts of options for the for the watercolor one. Um, like we could get really dramatic and we could do something like this, which is so much fun. It's kind of crazy, but it's I have a blast when I do crazy stuff like that. Um, or we can do something similar to the last time we did a cloud paint along and I did more of a fluffy. We did like four different types of clouds, but um, we could stick with something more common like that. And like for instance, this is one that um, I did on stream and when I was doing this painting a lot of people were asking about it like how to do it and a lot of it is all just about how you leave space leave white you leave your negative space as the highlight of the cloud itself so 